It's market day here on planet Jurassinome. Although dinosaurs never mastered commerce during their stint on Earth, under the right atmospheric conditions, it turns out that they are actually expert entrepreneurs. But we're not here for a deep dive into alien reptile economics. That's a different course. Our first priority is to examine how these dinos' genotypes influence their phenotype. Now, what is phenotype? As you may recall, phenotype refers to an organism's observable characteristics. This pterodactyl represents phenotype because, as you can see, her characteristics are very observable. However, phenotype is not just what an organism looks like. It also includes an organism's behaviors and traits that are not outwardly visible, like, let's say, the function of their internal organs. Every organism's overall phenotype of many traits is determined by a combination of the alleles the organism carries and the environment they experience. Unless you're looking at a group of clones, populations always have phenotypic variation among individuals. When there is variation in the phenotype of one specific trait, like the spikes of these stegosaurus that can be either round or spiky, it's called polymorphism. Genetic polymorphism occurs when there are multiple alleles of one or more genes that cause variation in a trait. Some polymorphic traits vary categorically, while others vary continuously. Let's browse the quality hat stand to see exactly what that means. At the quality hat stand, these entrepreneurial dinos are selling hats that vary qualitatively. Qualitative traits are not easy to measure, but instead can be grouped into discrete categories. For humans, think eye color, hair color, or having attached or detached earlobes. At this stand, there are three quality categories. Baseball caps, fedoras, and holiday hats. There's no obvious way to measure which type of hat is which, but it's easy to group them based on their appearance. Now, over at the next stand, this dino is clearly going for quantity over quality. Ugh, amateur. Here, they only sell quantitative dino goods. Quantitative traits vary continuously and can be measured in precise units. That's why at this stand, the goods are weighed down to the decimal and a receipt rolls out of the cash register continuously. For quantitative traits, think of those that have infinite possible measurements in a population, like height or weight. These traits usually have so many possible values because they're influenced by genes and many loci, or they're influenced by a combination of genetics in the environment. So, what is that orange stuff anyway? I don't trust this dude. Let's take a look at the other customers to get some more deets on how phenotypic variation arises from genotypic variation. These two diplodocuses represent diploid organisms, which have two copies of each of their autosomal genes, that is, genes that exist on non-sex chromosomes. Here, on planet Jurassinome, a flower represents a gene, and different types of flowers represent alleles. Notice that because these diplodocuses are diploid, they are each wearing two flowers to represent that they carry two alleles for each gene. How these two alleles interact with each other plays a large role in determining an individual's phenotype. From here on out, we are only going to consider Mendelian traits. For Mendelian traits, phenotype is solely determined by one gene that has only two alleles in the population. In this case, one allele is the big red flower and the second allele is a small white flower. This gene determines what color dinosaurs are. Notice that the red diplodocus is wearing a red flower. Mendelian traits are great for learning about the principles of genetics and inheritance, but these traits are actually pretty rare in nature. Phenotype determination usually gets much more complicated. Mendelian traits have one dominant and one recessive allele for the gene that controls them. Big flowers with domino dots represent dominant alleles. If an organism has a copy of the dominant allele, the phenotype associated with the dominant allele will show, or, as geneticists would say, be expressed. This means that even if the diplodocus just has one domino flower between its two alleles, it will still express a red phenotype. On the other hand, a recessive phenotype is only expressed when an organism has two copies of the recessive allele, which we represented with a hidden white flower. That means if an individual is heterozygous, aka carrying a copy of the dominant and the recessive allele, you'd have no idea that the recessive allele was present just by looking at their phenotype. Like this diplodocus, whose phenotype is pure red, even though they've got a hidden white flower behind the red domino flower. Now, the white diplodocus has two hidden recessive flowers and no red domino flowers, so she is able to express the recessive white phenotype. Take a look at this diplodocus carrying a basket of recessive flowers. He represents a disease carrier. 
an individual who carries an allele for a recessive disease, but does not show a diseased phenotype. If two carriers of the same recessive allele reproduce, some of their offspring would be expected to be homozygous recessive and show the diseased phenotype. Good thing this dino's flying solo today. Now, all the diplodocuses we just saw show complete dominance for color, just like this triceratops. For a gene with complete dominance, in heterozygotes, the dominant allele wins the phenotype and fully masks the recessive allele such that only the dominant phenotype is visible. However, for many genes, the alleles of heterozygotes share the phenotype a bit better. Like this two-headed heterozygote, who's doing a great job of cohabiting the same body and sharing their phenotype. This dino shows co-dominance, which means that two different alleles are fully expressed in a heterozygote. Notice how this dino is expressing both the red from its domino flower and the white from its hidden flower. Finally, take a look at this pink dino. You'll notice his tail is missing, so... I guess you could say he's a bit incomplete? That's because this dino shows incomplete dominance, which means the phenotype of heterozygotes is a blend of the two alleles they carry. This dino gets its pink color because the red from the domino flower and the white from its hidden flower have blended together, just like red and white paint. Unlike the three dinosaurs we just saw, sometimes organisms carry genotypes that aren't expressed. Traits that are controlled by multiple genes may be masked by the expression of alleles at other loci. Furthermore, a gene's expression can be altered through epigenetic regulation, where non-sequence changes to DNA modify gene expression. In order to describe the extent to which genotypes are expressed, scientists use two measures, penetrance and expressivity. Let's start with penetrance. Penetrance measures how likely it is that a phenotype will be expressed by an individual carrying a given genotype. Penetrance is calculated as the percentage of a population with a given genotype that shows the trait expected for that genotype. To remind us that penetrance measures the percent of a population that shows a trait, this billboard reminds us of the percentage of the dinosaur population that sees pearlier whites after using enamel penetrating toothpaste. Turns out dental hygiene is something else dinosaurs mastered under the right atmospheric conditions. Earth just didn't do them justice. A genotype shows reduced or incomplete penetrance if all individuals with the genotype do not express the expected phenotype, which occurs any time penetrance is less than 100%. Expressivity describes the degree to which individuals with a given genotype express the associated phenotype. For these two expressive dinos, the pearly white trait is highly expressed for the happy dino with the gleaming chompers, while the sad dino has low expressivity for this trait. He shows just a little bit of gleam, despite carrying the same genotype. If all individuals with the same genotype always have the same phenotype, that gene is said to have constant expressivity. If the phenotype of individuals with the same genotype at a locus varies, then that gene is said to have variable expressivity. Because expressivity varies. Get it? The difference between penetrance and expressivity is subtle and can get confusing. Remember, penetrance describes how likely a genotype is to be expressed at all. Think black and white. Whereas expressivity describes how strongly a genotype is expressed. Think shades of gray. All right. It looks like we've just about covered the whole market. So let's take a look back at what we saw at this bustling affair. An organism's observable characteristics make up its phenotype. Phenotype is determined by a mixture of genotype and the environment an organism experiences. Genetic polymorphism is a type of phenotypic variation that occurs when there are multiple alleles of one or more genes that cause a trait to vary. Qualitative traits vary in a manner that is easily categorized but difficult to measure precisely. Conversely, quantitative traits are measurable and have a continuous distribution. For Mendelian traits, Dominant alleles are expressed as the phenotype even if an organism only carries a single copy of the allele. But recessive alleles are only expressed when an individual carries two allele copies. In heterozygotes, the dominant allele masks the recessive allele's expression. A disease carrier has a copy of a harmful recessive allele but does not show a diseased phenotype. Next, we saw three patterns of dominance. 
In genes that show complete dominance, the presence of a dominant allele fully masks expression of the recessive allele. In genes that show codominance, two different alleles are simultaneously expressed in heterozygotes. And in genes that show incomplete dominance, the phenotype of the heterozygotes is a blend of the two alleles they carry. Finally, there are two ways to evaluate the expression of a given genotype. Penetrance measures the percentage of individuals with a given genotype that express the associated phenotype, while expressivity is a measure of how strongly individuals who carry a genotype show the associated phenotype. Well, I'm feeling like an expert on dinoeconomics and patterns of dominance, so I think we can call this mission a success. Now, if only I could bring some of those hats back to Earth for my friends. They are such high quality.